again. Again, it is good to see you, your smiling faces um, on this Sunday morning. There's no football. There's, I don't even, basketball, maybe. You know, it's that, that in-between season where you're trying to find out what you're going to do at the church, right? For me, I, just, I can only speak for me, it's that, that season I'm trying to figure out what to do after church other than take a nap. So today, today we were read two portions of scripture, one from Exodus and the other from uh, the book of John. And in our Exodus story, it's a story of marvelous provision a water amid the desert follows a, a, a similar story of the miraculous provision of food, quail, and manna. And both seem like the stuff of fairy tales, right? Whether these events occur, occur exactly as they are said to have occurred or whether there are metaphors for a deeper message or both. One thing is certain. The Israelites survived the desert journey and entered the promised land. They reached their goal, and clearly they needed to eat and drink during the 40-day period, which um, clearly in the desert there was scant water available. Hmm. Thus the story uh, of the water from the rock may or may not, you know, be um, give us all the details that we want, but it tells a truth regardless of whatever else you try to read into it. Because it's not merely reporting a hysterical fact it has an application for all times and circumstances. It says that God will provide us with enough for those who trust in him, pray to him, and turn to him, and that he will provide even for those who do not. Moses turned to God and trusted the people did not. Yet God answered Moses' prayer, and the people benefited. They're complaining and putting God to the test, notwithstanding, no one deserves God's grace when you think about it. But these people went out of their way to irritate God. Yes, God granted Moses' prayer anyway for them because they were thirsty. And then you look at the John scripture of the Samaritan woman. It says at verse 10, Jesus answered her, if you knew the gift of God and what it is that you asked for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Sir, the woman said, you have nothing to draw with, and the well is deep. Where can you get this living water? Are you greater than our father Jacob, who gave us the well and drank from it himself, as did also his sons and his livestock? And Jesus answered, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again, but whoever drinks the water I give them will never thirst. Indeed, the water I give them will become in them a spring of water welling up to eternal life. And the woman said to him, sir, give me this water so I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming to draw from here. Hmm. You know, the world that we live in today We just don't seem to have enough. Enough 
from one another, enough from God. We seem to want more and more. And I'm always puzzled by that because why is that? Why, when we have a God that gives us everything that we need and a lot of what we want, we still want more. We just don't have enough. Our scriptures this morning remind us that there is enough. There's enough for all of us. And that we don't have to act the way that we act sometimes because um, we don't think that we have enough. The disciples... If you look at the verse, the John passage, had questions for Jesus when they came and they saw him talking to the Samaritan woman. The scripture says they didn't say anything because, you know, of course, those wonderful disciples, right? They had a little fear because when they said things to Jesus or they thought something, Jesus would ask them a question. A question he already knew the answer to, but he would ask it anyway to make them think. Kind of like what he does with, with us today. Jesus was talking to the Samaritan woman, someone that the Jewish people normally didn't talk to because of their differences, and the fact that she was a woman during this specific time, that was a no-no. But we know Jesus was all about being different and breaking the rules, so to speak, that, that the people made, right? Jesus told this woman about her life. And she was amazed at the knowledge that Jesus had about her, but she had never met him before. Hmm. Through this encounter, Jesus... Jesus shows us that not just the fact that his grace is sufficient, but there is enough of that grace for all of us to receive it. And not only for us to receive it, it's enough of this grace for us to give back to one another and the people that we come in contact with. Jesus went out of his way from where he was traveling to this place where this woman came to. It wasn't happenstance. Jesus knew that he had to be there to meet her. He knew that this woman was thirsty. Not just thirsty for water, but she was thirsty from, for a word of the Lord. She was thirsty because at that point, She was dry and barren from the lack of love, being an outcast in the city in which she was living because of the lifestyle that people did not approve of. She was lonely, destitute, looking for love in all the wrong places. We know that song. Right? 
That was her. And then Jesus shows up. He shows up at the right time to help her. He shows up to fill her, to quench this thirst that she had. And she thought this thirst that she had was for water. For the water that, that you and I drink. I thought I had a bottle up here with me. For water, right, that we drink to keep us alive, to keep us functioning. But she was really thirsty for a word from God. She was thirsty to be filled back up with everything that she had emptied herself to the people in the town that she lived in who turned their backs on her. Jesus showed up right on time, right when she probably was feeling that there was nothing else that she could do at that moment. Jesus was on the scene to tell her, I have exactly what you need. I have what you're looking for. Trust in me. Read my word. Learn about me. You will never be thirsty again. The first time he said it, I'm sure, it went right over her head. She didn't get it. But as Jesus talked to her more and more, it began to sink in. It began to sink in that the things that she needed, the things that she was looking for, were not in the people in that town that she lived in, but from a, a living Savior, someone right there, the Messiah, would answer her prayers and give her everything she needed at, at that moment. That there was enough. There was enough for her. There was enough for the people that lived there. Her life forever changed. She was not the same after she talked with Jesus. The wonderful thing about this encounter was not just that he quenched her thirst and showed her that there was a more, more than enough for her and everybody else. He fixed it so that he filled her up so much that it began to overflow. She had more than enough that she ran back to the village, to the very people that shunned her, who wouldn't talk to her, that grace that was abounding on her, she took it back and gave it to the people who didn't even want to talk to her. That's the God that we serve. He gives us more than enough of what we need so that we're able to go back. You know some, uh, the, the passage, you make your enemies your footstool. That's what he did. He used the circumstances that she was in that turned the people against her to turn them around for them to want to know who he was. Think about that. Think about the impact that this woman coming out in the heat of the day to get some water from the well. That she got more than the physical water she got the spiritual water, the living water, and she took it back. And the people who wouldn't look at her before now looked at her in a whole different light. They looked at her in a whole different light. She now went back and said, I met a man who knew everything about 
me, who told me all, everything that I did that was good, bad, indifferent, whatever it was, and he changed my life. And I know I'm more than enough. I know that I'm worthy, much more worthy of how you've been treating me. I know that now I am the king's kid. And no matter what you say or how you treat me, I'm loved. And instead of turning that around and being angry, she shared the love that Jesus gave to her at that moment with the people in that town who had shunned her. Y'all not getting it. Because if you did, you'd be on your feet with me right now saying hallelujah because he took that moment and he changed not just her life, a whole town. A whole town who came back and said, we believe because of what you said, but we went to see for ourselves and we believe because of the encounter we had with him as well. Basically, thank you. Thank you for introducing us to Jesus. Thank you for sharing your story. Thank you for believing that you are more than enough because of your encounter with him. Thank you for not being stuck on how we treat you. Basically, it was like an apology. We're sorry. We didn't mean it. We didn't know. But now we know, and because we know the truth, the truth has set us free. We can no longer condemn you based on what we see. We have to treat you in love because we had an encounter with Jesus as well. He showed us there's more than enough for all of us. There's enough grace. There's enough mercy that we don't have to stay where we are. We need to go and do like you did and spread this word. Spread this, this word of salvation to the people that we meet as well. That's what it's all about. They got it. It was their aha moment. You ever had one of those? You going in the midst of something, and at the end, um, as, as God begins to turn it around, you go, oh, I got it. It was that simple. Thank you, Lord. I should have came to you in the first place. Right? Because we usually go to other people first. We usually try to do other things first. And what Jesus is showing us is that when we stop, when we stop and engage with him through the reading of our Bibles, through prayer, through conversation with him, he can change us. He can turn our situations around because that's what he did, isn't it? Her situation was one way when she met him. By the time Jesus got finished talking to her, she was a whole different person. Her entire situation had changed. And you know what? From what I read, he didn't browbeat her. He didn't take the Bible and hit her over the head with it. He didn't do anything like that. He sat and he had a conversation with her. He loved her right where she was. He pointed out to her what she was doing that wasn't right. But he showed her love first. He showed her that she was more than enough, that her circumstances did not dictate her future. Because she had an encounter with, her, with him, that her future was going to be changed. Her future was looking brighter. She was going to be better off in the end than when she started. Amen? Amen? 
we have an abundance. Let me, let, me, let me go back for a moment. In the United States, we have abundance, whether we believe it or not. We have many people who are living below the poverty line. Our poverty line is still above the poverty line of most places. We have more than enough. But there's always more that we can do for each other. Sharing our resources, sharing, sharing what we have, what God has given us with other people, shows them that there is enough for all of us. When we begin thinking like that, changing our thinking, that all that I have, I got to hold it, I got to hoard it, I got to do whatever because this time is coming and I need to make sure I have what I have because I don't want to get to a point where I don't have. I don't know how many times I've heard that, how many people I have talked to, and I've sat down with them. See, before I be, became a pastor, I used to do finances. And before that, I used to be a nurse. And I used to have to talk to people, right, about living and doing the things that you needed to, to do to, to stay alive and take your medicine and, and, and you know. I, I had a life. Not that I don't have one now. But I did other stuff. And people need to know that they are valued. People need to know that where they are is only temporary. People need to know that somebody loves them. And when you put that all together, people realize that they are more than enough, that they have more than enough to be able to survive and thrive the way we were intended to. When you start thinking like that, you can't keep what you have to yourself because you want other people to feel what you're feeling. And so you want to give and share the information that you have with other people to lift them up. That's what it's about. This water, this water, they talk about it in Exodus, this water, we're, we're talking about it here in John, right? We know water is essential to life, correct? Yes, no, maybe? Y'all gonna talk to me this morning? Okay, come on, come on, talk to me. It's no surprise that the Bible will use it as a major metaphor. And a metaphor, when they talk about water in the Bible, usually is about grace. Grace, grace that is extended to all. Water that we, in the physical means, we, we, we take it for granted. We think we have this endless supply that is, is, is never going to run out, and that it only happens in other countries. Well, we have cities and, and neighborhoods right here in these United States who have contaminated water, who are not able to drink the water that's coming out of their fountain, and they're dependent on, on the government to send them water that they're looking for their neighbors and their brothers and sisters in Christ to help them so that the people that are in charge will do what they need to do to, to change the pipe and to update their systems and stuff so that they can have the abundance of water that the rest of us have that we forget that even here in the United States, there are people who do not have running water. That should not be. 
not going to go off on my tangents, but I did need to mention that. I'm going to get off my soapbox. I'm going to go back to this, to this word right here. The woman at the well. The Israelites in, in the desert. Shows us, if nothing else, that God provides. He had Moses strike the rock, and water came gushing out. This woman went to the well, and she left with not just the physical Water. As a matter of fact, it says she left her, her bucket there and went to tell the people because she was so full of the spirituality that Jesus gave her during their encounter, she totally forgot about the physical water that she came there to pick up. Imagine that. Imagine if we... If we got off our high horses and stepped down and truly, truly met people where they are, we would be willing to help them in their deprivement of water or whatever it is that they are lacking, that they will see Jesus and that they will become part of the family of God if only we were obedient to what we were told to do when we were told to do it. Because I know at some point, God has asked each of us to do something that goes outside of the realm of what we are willing to do, and we've said no. Don't worry, he's going to come back and ask you to do it again. And we got a choice. Are we going to show that there is enough for all of us that through Jesus Christ there is enough? Or not? That's the question today. Are we going to be obedient? to the call that is on our lives as Christians, are we going to answer? I usually have more questions than I have answers. Today is no different than the other, any other day I get up here. We are all called to something greater. We are all called to something greater. But knowing that, that Jesus Christ showed us and is telling us that there is enough for all of us. That's what I'm going to leave you with today. Reminding you that you are enough, that there is enough. And what can we do to help those who can't help themselves? So today, I would like us to, to stand up.